Okay. It's almost time. Yeah, okay. Oh, hi. You've come at a very bad time. You see, because there's something outside my door right now. It's trying to get in here and kill me, and I have no idea what it is. You're actually good news. Five Nights at Freddy's, the one horror game that not only introduced me to the world of horror games, but it is also the one thing that introduced me into the horror genre as a whole. This series officially turns nine years old this year, and almost an entire decade later, we're not only getting the 11th game in the series by the end of 2023, but we're also still getting more books to come based on the games, and a movie that is being produced by one of Hollywood's greatest horror producers of all time, Jason Blum from Blumhouse Productions. Five Nights at Freddy's has definitely come a long way ever since its first game's release back in 2014. And with the recent announcement releases of Security Breach's Ruin DLC, the FNAF movie teaser trailer, as well as Help Wanted 2 being revealed, I thought I'd go back and revisit this whole franchise and see what it was like back then in 2014. Now, I'm just going to give a little quick side note. No, I'm not going to be talking about the books. Instead, I'm just going to be completely talking about the games. Uh, the books, yes, they are a different canon, and I am aware that they do reveal stuff for the games, but because it is technically a separate canon, I won't be talking about those. Instead, I'm just going to be talking about the main games and what we got from Scott Cawthon himself. No other collaborators, just Scott himself. So, without further ado, Let's go back to 2014 for the first Five Nights at Freddy's title! In 2013, game developer Scott Cawthon releases a small point-and-click construction game titled Chipper and Sons Lumber Co. You play as this beaver named Tyke, and throughout this game, you chop down trees, collect wood, and regrow them as well as sell them. When this game was first released, people claimed that the game and its characters looked a little stiff. Not a lot of emotions came out of these characters, some going as far as to say that they looked like animatronic robots. This would have also been Scott's final game due to its reviews. However, he then took the reviews of having the characters look like animatronics and created something different. Something... scary. And in 2014, enter Five Nights at Freddy's, a point-and-click survival horror game in which you take the role of a nighttime security guard at your local Chuck E. Cheese light pizzeria. All seems normal until you find out that the four main animatronic robots roam the building at night. Now turning a simple job as a night guard into a terrifying nightmare as you try to survive each night from 12am to 6am while avoiding to be killed by these animatronic mascots. Now, the game's story, it was hidden, but it was there. You just probably missed it. Having you look around through the cameras, you will find newspaper clippings and haunting images of this building's past, where five children went missing while a man on the phone simply called Phone Guy gives you some backstory. Hello? Hello? Uh, I wanted to record a message for you to help you get settled in on your first night. Um, I actually worked in that office before you. I'm finishing up my last week now, as a matter of fact, so... I know it can be a bit overwhelming, but I'm here to tell you there's nothing to worry about. Uh, you'll do fine. Welcome to Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, a magical place for kids and grown-ups alike, where fantasy and fun come to life. Fazbear Entertainment is not responsible for damage to property or person. Upon discovering that damage or death has occurred, a missing person report will be filed within 90 days or as soon as property and premises have been thoroughly cleaned and bleached and the carpets have been replaced, blah, blah, blah. Now, that might sound bad, I know, but there's really nothing to worry about. Uh, the animatronic characters here do get a bit quirky at night, but do I blame them? No. So just be aware, the characters do tend to wander a bit. Uh, they're left in some kind of free-roaming mode at night. Uh, they used to be allowed to walk around during the day, too, but then there was the bite of 87. The lore of this game just grew and grew. It's also at this point where the game started to get a lot of popularity thanks to content creators PewDiePie, Jacksepticeye, 
and everyone's favorite pink mustached gamer, Markiplier. Top of the morning to you ladies, my name is Jacksepticeye and welcome to Five Nights at Freddy's, a game that I feel like I don't even have to explain anymore because every single person on the planet is playing this game right now, except me. How's it going bros, my name is Paradise. So many of you bros have suggested this game. All the bros in the comments, everyone, everyone. My mom called me to play it and she's like, why haven't you played this game yet? I'm serious. I wish I was joking. Hello everybody, my name is Markiplier and welcome to Five Nights at Freddy's, an indie horror game that you guys suggested en masse and I saw that Yami Mass played it and he said it was really, really good. So I'm very eager to see what is up. Where'd he go? Oh, hi! Shit, 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 I lost one, that guy moved! I wanna go home now. I'm pretty sure that whatever they're paying me here is not worth it. Oh, Jesus! <laughs> oh, come on. Sounds, I don't like him. Perfect! No! Oh, yes! Yeah. Oh, fucking fuck! Who would eventually begin to start posting their online reactions to the game to its many horrors and jump scares that this game had to offer. Along with the OG main crew, as I like to call them, this was also the beginning for brand new content creators to appear. Content creators Dorko, Razbowski, 8 Ryan, Bazamalam, Fusion Z Gamer, Smike, and a bunch of others all roughly started creating content at the same time based on Five Nights at Freddy's. From gameplay videos to theory videos, Talking about the game's hidden lore, Five Nights at Freddy's was a huge success, and within the same year, Scott Cawthon began work on Five Nights at Freddy's 2. Now this game ain't perfect, but my god, is it a masterpiece. Yes, it is a horror game with jump scares, but it's the type of game that keeps you on your toes at all times. You never know what's gonna happen next. You need to keep an eye on the animatronics, close the doors, see if they're right outside your office, keeping an eye on Foxy, where if unwatched, he will sprint down the hallway into your office, making sure you don't encounter Golden Freddy by looking at the poster that changes randomly, and worst of all, never run out of power. If you happen to run out of power, the whole building goes dark with nothing but silence in the air until footsteps start approaching you. Freddy would then stare back at you from the doors with his face glowing while a music box rendition of the Toreador March is playing. Once Freddy stops, it's only a few seconds until you are- As I said, this game isn't perfect. But, in my opinion, it is just a masterpiece for what this game has created. London Bridge is falling down, falling down, falling down. London Bridge is falling down, my fair lady. Right after the success of Five Nights at Freddy's, Scott immediately began development on Five Nights at Freddy's 2. Posting small little teaser images on his website scottgames.com to see what it is that we could expect from this next installment in the franchise. This game would get even more intense with now new animatronic characters being added along with the original four now being withered and torn apart. This game also brought back the phone guy from the first game, which is odd at first because the character did die at the hands of Freddy and the gang in the first game. Uh, hello? Hello, hello? Uh, hello and welcome to your new summer job at the new and improved Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. Uh, I'm here to talk you through some of the things you can expect to see during your first week here and to help you get started down this new and exciting career path. HOW ARE YOU STILL ALIVE?! STAY DEAD! Officially making Five Nights at Freddy's 2 a prequel to the first game's story. This game's mostly got the same exact premise as the first game. You're a night guard at a pizzeria, you gotta survive a couple of weeks of nights at a pizzeria. Nothing different. But, this time, there was something that was being told directly to us. The cutscenes of this game has the perspective of Freddy from the first game, and the minigames that you play when you die in a night it's told with an 8-bit Atari game style.
Now, these little mini games, they look fun and all, but there's like a little bit of a reoccurring thing with them. Having scenes of kids being mur you can't really say that anymore now, can ya? Um, kids have been unalived at the pizzeria by a mysterious man with no given name whatsoever other than Purple Guy. These minigames have the souls of the dead kids being brought back to haunt the animatronic suits by a new character known as the Marionette, which also seems to be possessed. <laughs> In this game, we follow mostly the exact same gameplay style. You look left and right, you look at the cameras to see where the animatronics are, you know, to keep track of where they are. Uh, except this time, uh, the only piece of defense you have with yourself is a Freddy mask, and there's no doors to protect you. Instead, there are two ventilations on your right and left next to your desk. In front of you there is a large hallway where you can see the robots coming down. You have a spare Freddy mask to help protect you and fool the robots into thinking that you're one of them. They all fall for it except for Foxy, where instead you need to flash him with the light several times so that he can hide. The mask also doesn't stop the puppet from attacking you, so instead you need to keep winding up a music box. So that it doesn't pull a jack in the box on you and kill ya. <laughs> Also, I want to point out that when the marionette leaves the prize box, the music that starts playing in the background is Pop Goes the Weasel. And let me tell you, it is giving you tons of anxiety every time you listen to that song in the game, when you're playing it, because you know, it's coming for you. Five Nights at Freddy's 2 was released on November 11th, 2014, only four months apart from the first game's release. And just like the first game, it blew up in popularity. Although one of the hardest Five Nights games to come out, it's still fun to play. The game was a massive step up story-wise compared to the first entry. We now know that a purple man lured a bunch of children into the back room to kill them and stuff their bodies into the animatronic suits, which then causes their souls to go into possessing said animatronics. It was also around this time where Scott would keep updating his teaser images, encouraging theorists to alter the brightness and contrast of the images to see any hidden secrets, including in the trailers. Let me ask you this, who back in 2014 played the Five Nights at Freddy's 2 trailer in reverse and listening to London Bridges falling down and then hearing Mike killed all? never the official name for our purple guy at the time, it was still a nice and creepy easter egg to find within the trailer itself. Having to hear Mike killed all when listening to London Bridge is falling down in reverse. Once again, after the release of Five Nights at Freddy's 2, Scott posted another teaser image, announcing that Five Nights at Freddy's 3 would be happening and was slated to release in 2015. This time, things would be different. With all the images shown, only one animatronic was being promoted. People started speculating that this new character that Scott was teasing was either a Golden Bonnie variant or an entirely brand new character altogether. Some even saying that it could have been the original Freddy we've been hearing about in the game, called Fredbear. And after a few teaser images later, we got the trailer for Five Nights at Freddy's 3, and to all of a surprise, yeah, it was a new Bonnie design. Days later, after the release of the trailer, Scott had made a post on Steam with a clever way to reveal the character's name. This would eventually be Springtrap. Now at one point, Scott had to go on Steam and make a post, uh, sadly confirming that he had been hacked by someone, and that that person found the original Five Nights Freeze 3 game, and he released it for free over on GameJolt. Ha <laughs> ha, but 
is sending up being a troll game by Scar himself! <laughs> Simply reskinning one of his older games, there is no pause button, only with a Freddy head. Which, by the way, I did make a little video way back when of me playing There Is No Pause Button. You can watch that video right here. Hi guys, I'm gonna be whispering for this video because it is currently 3 a.m. After he fooled the entire community, and after a few days went by, on March 2nd, 2015, Five Nights at Freddy's 3 would officially release. This new title was a little bit different compared to the last two. This time, only the new character Springtrap could kill you, while the other animatronics that appear in the game only serve as hallucinations or phantoms as they're preferred in the game to only make the night harder for you. Yeah, for some reason, not all of the characters were listed on the extras menu. For example, in the extras menu, Phantom Mango is nowhere to be seen, but when you're playing the game, he's going to appear on your camera, and then she's going to appear on the other side of your window. Was this a little mistake that Scott made and never actually added in Phantom Mango into the extras menu? Who knows? But Phantom Mango is in the game, just not in the extras menu. This game's mechanics are a little different. You still have the camera system, but now you have a reboot system where if something fails, you're required to reboot said system before you can use it again. This game also introduces an audio lore mechanic where you need to use it to trick Springtrap into another location on the map. Although not the scariest game in the original series, this game still managed to tell one of my favorite moments in the story. The epic reveal and death of the purple guy! He's dead! After beating all five knights, you get to play as one of the five souls that got stuffed within the suits of the animatronics, trapping and forcing the purple guy to hide inside of the Springtrap animatronic suit. However, because of the building's withered state and water leaking inside, the spring locks in the suit cause them to lock all the parts in its place, causing the suit to malfunction on the purple guy, killing him in the process. <laughs> The bad ending where you play the game normally still keeps the children's souls trapped in the animatronic suits. However, with the good ending, you're setting them free once and for all. To get the good ending, you must first find hidden hints in the 8-bit minigames after each night. Then you must solve puzzles in each night to find the hidden minigames. Then you need to solve multiple puzzles in each night to find more hidden minigames. Playing all the minigames normally won't do much, but if you manage to glitch through some of them, they will alter a bit. After replaying the game again, you will unlock the good ending. This was the first game in the series to introduce multiple endings, a good and a bad ending. This is probably my favorite Five Nights game out of the original four games. Thanks to its epic reveal of the purple guy being locked inside of the Springtrap suit that we've been fighting throughout the entire game, as well as being a nice fitting end to the souls of the kids that got murdered at the Freddy Fazbear's locations back then. And it was a nice fitting end to the children's souls that went on to possessing the Fazbear crew in the previous games. But hey, that's just not the end of the story. There's a lot more. On July 23rd, 2015, Five Nights at Freddy's 4 was released. By far, one of the scariest games in the Five Nights at Freddy's franchise yet. Five Nights at Freddy's 4 introduces an entirely brand new environment. You are now in a bedroom, one where you're not looking at cameras, not using audio laws, and no mask. This time, you take the role of a child in their bedroom as giant nightmare versions of Freddy, 
Bonnie, Chica, and Foxy come for you. This game also relies more on sound cues and listening for breathing, as well as introducing for the first time Fredbear. <laughs> who was the original mentioned Golden Freddy, as well as a black variant simply called Nightmare. It also brings back Springtrap, but in a plush form called Plush Trap. This time, the game's story has you play as a crying child, where you must explore the area that this character lives in, as well as the original restaurant that the story began with, Fredbear's Family Diner. This child has an older brother who loves to scare him while wearing a foxy mask, since the child has a fear of the animatronic robots. On the child's birthday, his brother decided to pick up his sibling with a group of friends for a prank. Unfortunately, a prank that went too far, placing the child's head inside of the Fredbear animatronic's mouth, and due to the sprain locks inside and the child's crying tears, the locks take their place, causing the robot to bite down on the child's head, which kills the child in the process. Hey guys, I think the little man said he wants to give Fredbear a big kiss. On three, one, two. Was that the bite of 87? Yep. Yeah. Can't wait for the movie to show this event in live action form. This is now known as The Bite of 83. Once again revealed to be a prequel game. It is revealed that the two boys are the sons of the purple guy, who was an employee at the original restaurants as seen in the minigames, placing a costume on another person. As mentioned, this game is considered to be the scariest game in the original four, since it requires you to listen for the animatronics. Barney and Chica, just like in the first game, will approach you from left to right. If they are outside your door, listen for the breathing and hold the door shut until they leave. Foxy remains inside your closet. Keep going back to the closet and holding the door shut until he turns into a plush toy. Freddy slowly sends his little Freddy creatures called Freddles. You must shine your light on them to make them hide under the bed. If you fail to do so, well then... Did I get you? After beating a knight and a minigame, you will play Fun with Plush Trap. A small game where you need to make Plush Trap sit down on an X in front of you before he reaches you and kills you. If you manage to make him sit on the X, you skip two hours on the next night. When you beat all five knights, you unlock the sixth knight. And beating this knight gives you a cutscene where you see the crying child kneeling down as the character plushies slowly fade away in the darkness, leaving only Fredbear behind. The cutscene ends with the child's eyes closing for one final time as in the distance you can hear a flatline go off, implying that the child is now dead! A seventh knight is then unlocked in the extras menu upon beating that knight. When doing so, a chest appears right in front of you. The chest remains locked up and text above it starts saying, Some things are best left forgotten for now. A few months later on October 31st, 2015, the game would get its free Halloween update. No new story got added and it was mostly just a reskin of the original game. Nightmare Bonnie and Chica became jack-o'-lantern versions of themselves. Nightmare Foxy got replaced by Nightmare Mango. Plush Trap got replaced by Nightmare Balloon Boy. Oh god, not you again. Ah! And Nightmare got replaced by Nightmare Own. <laughs> Secretly, there's also an eighth night. By typing 20 four times in the extras menu, the Nightmare Mode officially becomes the new 2020-2020 mode, considered to be the ultimate challenge in Five Nights at Freddy's 4. Now, I'm gonna be completely honest, this is definitely one of the Five Nights at Freddy's games that I myself would not revisit. Not because I don't hate it, in fact, I actually love it for this reason. I just don't like the idea of me crawling up to a door and having to listen for the animatronics' breathing. I just don't like listening for the animatronics' breathing and sounds as I'm waiting at the door in case it jump scares me. And also, because of the environment that I technically live in, it kind of makes it impossible for me to play Five Nights at Freddy's 4 with all the listening issues, even with headphones. 
Does it look like I can play Five Nights 4 with all this loud music going on outside? Again, probably my favorite Five Nights at Freddy's game when it comes to its music choices. The best song has got to be the one that plays throughout the final cutscene. The one that has the crying child's death, in my opinion. And that was Five Nights at Freddy's 4. Uh, yeah, that was that. If I had to rank the original four games, in my opinion, I would probably say from best to worst, in my opinion, that's gonna be Five Nights at Freddy's 1, 3, 2, then 4. That is gonna be my opinion in that order. Well, that concludes the first part of this story. There's still a lot more that we need to know about this story. Five Nights at Freddy's is a game series that I myself really love and I'm not gonna stop loving it anytime soon. I love it for its story, its music choices, uh, as well as its compositions, the original ones. And I'm extremely excited to see what Jason Blum of Blumhouse Productions brings to the movie. Like, I'm really curious whether if they're really gonna bring in the Bite of 87's event 83, we'll get that into eventually. I'm just way too invested with this story. I love the game's story. I still have yet to read the books. I haven't read the books, I just have them. I bought them God knows how many years ago. But again, I absolutely love this game. I love the, the story, especially the music, the fan-made music. If you guys listen to the Living Tombstone, you know, to all of the content creators that eventually make music on this uh, game franchise, I highly recommend you guys giving them all a listen. They're really great, they're really nice. Uh, and I love to listen to them in my, my free time, so yeah. In the next video, we're gonna be tackling what I'm calling the Afton Era. Where we're gonna be covering the next four games of the official story. We're gonna be covering FNAF World, Sister Location, Pizzeria Simulator, and Ultimate Custom Night. Thank y'all so much for watching this video. If you guys loved this video, definitely look forward to the next one. It's gonna be a very similar format. Uh, I really want to try and do more FNAF content, don't get me wrong, I'm probably going to do more of that, just like how I'm doing with Sonic stuff. So yeah, without further ado, I'm going to see you all in the next one. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment down below, share this video. What is your favorite moment from the original Five Nights series? Let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to follow me on the socials as well, I am very active on Twitter, and, uh, Discord I guess, that's something. And I will see you all on the flip side. Bye! -bye. Bye. The show will begin momentarily. Everyone please stay in your seats.